channel. Today I'm going to talk about how I found myself in Europe, so to say in Austria. So my journey to Europe began in, I have my notes here, I don't mind if you see some papers around or if you see me looking down, I have to, because it's a lot of things, so I have to keep um, referring to my paper a long time ago. So my journey to Europe began almost I'm 11 years ago. So I started um, my first trip to Europe was in um, my camera is not focusing. I don't know why. Let me see. There you go. In um, June of 2012. I went to Belgium as an au pair for a year, June 2012 to June 2013. So I was on a pay in Belgium and uh, I'm just going to talk briefly about this, um, what I, although, uh, briefly about my time in Belgium, briefly about, yeah, you get to know as you go along. So I actually went to au pair world, made an au pair profile and I put photos of myself and um, photos of me with children, of course, and yeah. And after, a few, I can't really remember the age limit for Belgium because it was really a long time, almost 10 years ago. Can you imagine that? So I can't remember really the age limit. So then, yeah, a nice family contacted me. They are a family of three boys. And then they sent me the contract, the health insurance and the proof of accommodation. And they also sent me a plane ticket. They were nice enough to get me a plane ticket. So. And the salary there was almost 400 euros. So that was my first time in Europe, June 2012, June 2013. My first flight is another story for another day that I have to make a whole new video about that. It was really traumatizing. Anyway, let's move on. So I stayed in Belgium until June of 2013. And then June until around August, I may say, I was still in Belgium because yeah, my visa was not yet, um, wie sagt man das, wie sagt man das, mein Visum war noch nicht abgelaufen. Aha, my visa had not yet expired, so I could, I stayed until August, and then I, um, I flew back home. Before I flew back home, I had already applied to several institutions about, um, um, if I could get a, a place in Germany, in Deutschland, in Germany. In Germany, yeah. So um, I had re sent about 50 applications and thank God I got one application but it came too late and before I could um, clear my stuff uh, with the Belgian family and then uh, get a certificate of good conduct for the Belgian police, it was too late. So I had to fly back home in the middle of June. Uh, yeah, middle of, uh, rather in the middle of August. So I flew back home and I stayed, well, of home in Kenya. I stayed in Kenya until, um, because already, I already had a contract by, his, by, the, by an organization in Germany, um, FSJ, Freiwillige Soziales, yeah. Um, it's a social year, you do it for a year. The age limitation for FSJ is about, I think, um, 26 years old, if I'm not wrong. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's 26 years old for FSJ. For BFD, that's a, it's for older people, but I didn't do BFD, so I only did FSJ. So I stayed in Kenya until by the time I went to the German embassy for my visa interview. Um, I got some, um, how is it called? Um, uh, yeah, my visa was approved in December of 2013. So, on December of 2013, happy me again, flight, Germany, Germany that was in Hamburg. I was at a place called Stade. It's about um, 30, 20, 30 minutes away from Hamburg. So, I was in Hamburg as an FSJ club for a whole year. And I'll say the FSJ is um, Freiwillige Soziales Jahr of Deutsch. In English, it's a social year. Uh, yeah, social year. So, the 80 meters said was 26, I'm not sure you can correct me if I'm wrong. So, I was in the um, Jugendbaupüte für Denkmalpflege. There are different places you can work 
work, I say, yeah. Uh, you can work with children, you can work at the hospital, you can work in, um, uh, with the Altersheim. How is, how is Altersheim called? Um, Altersheim. With the old people, and uh, you can work with the disabled. Also, there are different things you can do as, F as FSU club in kindergarten. But for me, I found the Denkmark thing. It was, I had no choice. It was <laughs> that the only people that lucky enough wrote back to me and said, yeah, we have a space, you can come. And had the advantage because from Kenya, they needed something, somebody um, exotic. Yeah. So they picked me. Thank God. It was like, out of, imagine out of 50 applications, I only got this one application. So. Yeah, if you applied a lot and don't get an answer, don't give up, just apply, apply, apply. You never know. See, after 50 applications, I finally got an, um, uh, a positive answer. So, I was an FSCHOTLA, um, yeah, for a whole year. And as before, I was an pair in, uh, the, they needed the budget for Roland Paul. Again. For the visa interview, I needed my contract from the Denmark Trade Lottery. I needed the health insurance, and I was lucky enough that they are giving accommodation because there's some organizations they don't offer accommodation. You have to struggle and look for it yourself. For me, I was lucky enough they offered accommodation, and yeah, that's what they offered. And uh, um, a salary was uh, 250 euro. In Belgium as an pair, let me take you back a little bit. In Belgium as an pair, I was getting paid 450 euros. And now, a year later, in German as an FSJ, I'm only getting paid um, 250 euros. That's a difference of 200 euros. That's a lot of money. And as I said, I'm lucky, I was lucky enough that they offered accommodation because with this 250, I don't think I could have survived with food and then uh, you have to pay electricity bill, you have to pay, the, to, pay, to pay the rent, you have to pay for water, you have to pay for heating. So I was lucky enough with this, um, that they offered me accommodation. So in December of um, 2013 until December of 2014, I was in... German, Germany, Deutschland, yeah. So, and then I thought, hmm, should I, should I not go back to Kenya? I said, nah, let me stay a little bit. But, and then again, I was lucky enough, they offered me an extension, but only it was until um, February, that was right before I turned 27, yeah. Because the age limit, if I'm not wrong, it's 26 or 27. But then they offered me Two months, uh, two more months right before I turned, um, right before I reached the, um, the age limit. So, the, the, unfortunately, they couldn't offer me more. So, but by this time, I was already, I had already, um, again, you know, pair work, I applied as an au pair, uh, for this time, I chose Austria. So, and also, lucky enough, I was writing to families, you write, you write, you write, you write. And then you never get answers back or you get negative answers. But I was lucky enough, I got a family in Wien, uh, Vienna. But it was, again, horrible, horrible, horrible. Again, that's a story for another video that I'm going to make a special video about that. For my first flight, that's also a special vlog. And for my au pair experience in uh, Austria, Wien, also Wien, that's also another vlog on itself. So those two are going to make different vlogs. This is just how I found my other, how I landed in Europe. You get me? So, <laughs> we move. So, um, I stayed there also for, from December 2014 to December 2015. Yeah. So they were offering me also, as above as in Belgium, also there, they offered me accommodation. They offered me, um, they had to provide health insurance, of course. They had a uh, plane ticket at any because I was already in Europe, so I just took the flex bus. Those who are in Europe, you know flex bus. It's a, yeah, a bus that's cheaper than flight and cheaper than a train. But 
it's so long, so, so, so long that if you're not patient or if you don't, uh, that's, uh, yeah. Anyway, so in these ones, they also offered me a salary of 450 euro. But it was, it was just horrible. That's really, that's just a vlog on its own. So let's move. Um, yeah, so I stayed um, in Wien from December 20, uh, from December 2014 to December 2015. So, and these ones, they also wanted me to stay a little bit longer in them, but the, the struggle I went through with this family, I thought to myself, no, I, I better fly back home. So, I decided to, yeah, I decided, you know what, if it wasn't meant to be that I stay in Europe, I better go back home. But before that, rewind. I was, I was in an, um, uh, I had, um, oh my god. What's this with the yellows? I had a uh, commission. He has this. Um, Egal. So, um, my God. He has this. Was that man? Was that man da? No. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. So, um, I had um. Registered myself in uh, online dating platforms and blah blah blah, blah yada, yada, yada. and um, yeah, so before I went home, I started communicating with people, but I was getting funny, uh, funny um, applications from funny people. I thought, you know what, I've had it, enough is enough, I am. Uh, I'm done. If it was not meant to be, I'm going home. But ta, 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 ta. lucky enough, sorry, lucky enough. When I was in Kenya, I was already in a, um, that's in December 2015. I didn't um, delete my profile, my um, online dating platform. So I was in Kenya, and then I, of course, had to change my number from a, an Austrian number to a Kenyan number. So. Out of nowhere, bop, 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 I see um, a message and I thought, hmm. So I went to the message and I opened it up and it was, aha, uh -huh, there was um, a wonderful man, I must say, or we would have gotten married. <laughs> so um, I saw and we, um, yeah, he wrote me a message, I wrote him back, which we exchanged um, numbers and um, we started writing. And as they say, the rest is hit. The rest is history. Got married. Mm. Can you see? Let me see. Um, there you go. Yeah. Got married to a wonderful man and were blessed with two kids. So that's my journey to Europe. And here I am. So please don't forget to like, share and subscribe and if you have any questions, comment down below and I'll try my best to answer. I'll see you in my next video.